This video is a quick response to a video by Mr. Thrive and Survive regarding the way we observe shadows on the moon. His video is linked in the description box. I am using Stellarium software in this case, which is open source planetarium software. Stellarium accurately models the motion of objects in the universe using known parameters of their movement. I have also linked some other space exploration software for you to check out. Most of them are free and some of them are open source. I have set my viewing location to Phoenix, Arizona, since that is where the pictures in the video were taken from. When I set the time to the first picture referenced in the video, January 22nd at 8.58 p.m., and zoom into the moon, the prediction from the software matches the, per the picture from the video perfectly. The same thing happens with the other picture taken 12 hours later on January 23rd at 8.27 in the morning. I'm going to speed up the time in the software and show what we expect to see from the perspective of an observer in Phoenix when tracking the moon. The apparent back and forth rotation of the moon is due to Earth's rotation and the changing viewing perspective. The moon itself is not rotating in that direction. The shadow on the moon stays aligned with the moon during this apparent rotation. Here I have the software set to track the movement of the moon and then I've zoomed out with a fisheye style lens on the Earth, which obviously makes it look smaller. The point of this is to, uh, so you can track where the moon is in relationship to the ground that you see. Here I'm turning off the ground so you can actually watch the way the moon rotates without the ground interfering with the view. The rotational oscillations that you see are occurring over a 24 hour period. The grid lines you see are actually aligned with the earth. The reason they're moving is because our camera is set to track the moon from the perspective of Phoenix. Here I am changing our viewing location to the North Pole to see how it affects what we see. When we observe the moon from the North Pole over time, we will not see the daily changes in apparent rotation, but because the moon does not orbit exactly along the equatorial line of the Earth, we will observe a small apparent rotation over the period of a month. I encourage you to download software such as Stellarium and explore the movements of objects in the sky on your own. A link has been provided in the description box to several different applications that you can run at home. There are also apps available for your phone that will make use of the accelerometers, compass, and GPS in your device that allow you to aim it at objects and the app will identify them for you. This application is called Solar System Scope. It's available at their website, solarsystemscope.com, or you can download and use it on your PC as a standalone op application. I would like to point out here that the orbit of the moon is not in alignment with the orbit of the Earth around the sun or the Earth's equator. I failed to see how anything that you have presented in your video invalidates the globe model. 
and is, as he described, impossible. Since the publication of the first version of this video, Mr. Thrive and Survive is already trying to move the goalposts, since there are multiple responses, similar to mine, that demonstrate where he is wrong. If you find errors in this video, please let me know in the comment section. If they are large enough to make a difference in the outcome, I will reproduce the video with the corrections. If you have suggestions on videos for me to analyze, please let me know. I would also appreciate any comments, likes, dislikes, and especially your subscription. Goodbye until next time.